Hi folks and welcome back to MU111 week two. We're obviously going back into Harmony. We're building on the things that we covered last week. So for this, our first video, we're going to be talking about tonality and chord hierarchy. I'm going to go through definitions and examples of what those two things are. Hopefully it's building on things that you're broadly familiar with as well. Uh, it shouldn't be any big surprise. Um, I guess to begin with, let's go over to Dictionary Corner for our definition of tonality. Tonality. The arrangement of pitches or chords in a tonal piece of music according to a kind of hierarchy, suggesting a direction, a hierarchy of some chords being more important than others. <laughs> Thanks, Dictionary Corner. Great. Great stuff. Um, okay, so tonality, right, sure, relations between chords and pitches and things like that. A really big one, though, is the sense of directionality, by which I mean the way that something starts and then goes off in the correct direction. So often uh, tonal music is about leaving the tonal key, Roman numeral one, and then moving on to somewhere else and eventually returning back. It's one of the big points. It's a lot of the reason why tonal music works. It also uh, establishes a sense of tension or drama. There's lots of established things. Um, but in a sense, that really is what tonality is. Okay, It doesn't apply to all music that we think is tonal. Historically, uh, it sort of evolved as a concept. So before, I don't really want to put a year on it, before, let's say, 1600, don't quote me on that, uh, it doesn't apply so much. Okay, The idea of relations of keys, of one key naturally following another in a particular hierarchy, that doesn't really apply in those. Building on what we had last week with Roman numerals and other ideas, I'm going to steer you towards our, our chord hierarchy. This is a really useful and important way for thinking about harmony. It's going to be something we build on for the rest of this week's session, really, of understanding of harmony. So crucially, let's say a major key, okay? We end up with triads, okay? Fine, you've got one triad for every uh, note of the scale, okay? We might think of them in particular groups, in particular in two big categories. So the triads in basically what are a major chord, specifically that's a major third and then a minor third, one above the other, uh, we call those the primary triads. So in a major key, that's chord one, chord four, and chord five. Okay? Tonic, so dominant, dominant. Okay? Fair enough. That's our primary triads. Lots of our very, very basic musical building blocks work off the relationships between those keys. Okay? We then might think of the, the remaining chords as in a kind of secondary triads, is often how they're called. In a major key, it's easy to spot those because they're just the minor triads, so chord two, chord three, and chord six, with a further one for diminished triad as well. Okay? So the relationships between these are important when we have primary and secondary uh, triads. Okay, so it can look something like this, your hierarchy of chords, okay? Within primary triads, we have a kind of level one and level two. In other words, the tonic is the one supreme, okay? That's the big honcho, the most important chord. So if we even have four or five, which we know are part of the primary triads, they're in a kind of level two. They're in the second division of primary triads. I don't really understand sport. I don't know if that metaphor holds up. You tell me. But even if we have chord four and then chord one, there's a feeling that four still needs to lead to one. And this is pretty much what this whole hierarchy of chords is all about. Uh, that we want everything to lead back to the tonic, okay? We go up this kind of hierarchy, so we have four or we have five in level two, and then our secondary triads, they all want to go back to the tonic as well. So in a usual harmonic route for sort of harmonic patterns, from level three, the secondary triads, the minor chords, we would then go to level two, so four or five, and then we would go back to tonic one. Often there's complicated ways of doing this, and a lot of sort of compositional art is about combining different ways of doing this. But this sense of chord hierarchy is really useful to think about. When we get to the end of the session, we're going to be talking about how we harmonize something like a Bach chorale, which is, you know, that's not easy to do. But that chord hierarchy is really useful if thinking, okay, I have this note in the melody, what possible chords could go with that? 
How does that fit with the chord hierarchy? Have I just had the tonic? Am I moving away from it? Do I want to be moving back? All of these things have a bearing, okay? So that's a new system of labeling chords. Last week we introduced Roman numerals, and now I want you to get used to the idea of, um, of chord hierarchy. So some of the exercises for this week, if you go and have a look at those, are about labeling chords according to chord hierarchy. So please have a go at that and look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Bye.